yeah, man. So we're just having a casual conversation for anybody who's tuning in on this. I just said that I was going to put it on YouTube, uh, but this is the first time Kevin and I have had a conversation. Uh, I kind of want to just learn more about you, man, your, your, your life, your story. You know, we could talk about training. We don't really have an agenda. Um, for me, I just put out a video actually uh, about the direction of my YouTube channel and uh, we can kind of talk about maybe some of that stuff, you know, and your thoughts in general, being sort of someone who creates content in a similar space. Uh, <laughs> but I'm just wanting to do what I want to do and try to dive as deep as I can with the people that are down with the things I have to talk about. And if it doesn't serve some other agenda or purpose, I'm not, I'm not doing it. Uh, and I think it's, it's the most beneficial for myself, my mental health, uh, my, yeah, my creative side, and then um, the, the people who consume this stuff. So yeah, man. So thanks for taking the time to just get on here and, and shoot the shit with me. Oh, of course. I've been uh, following for a long time. Uh, I don't think I'm like a super fan of anybody, but uh, I love your content. I found you through Omar Isaf, who I've been following since probably the very beginning, back when he was snorting creatine off of the lids of uh, uh, supplement cans. Uh, but no, I uh, discovered through that my first love in strength sports is strongman uh, because it, it completely turned my life around at 35 years old. Um, so I gravitate towards the creators in that space that are, you know, just seem like genuine dudes, non-toxic, just put awesome, fun, um, non-clickbaity content out there. And I, I just finished watching you do your 525 for 16. Uh, so, wow, dude, you're so strong. But like, yeah, I've been following for a, for a while and I actually like the Lion's Den um, as a community. And I, I took some I took some notes for my own community when I decided to take a really hard 180 turn away from drama content, which when I first got on YouTube, that's, that's what I made because it got attention. Uh, and I don't want that because I have a great community and I got to lead by example. And I got, I have to have my content and the things that I put out there match the energy that my community as a constructive supportive group of people has put out there. So yeah, you demonetizing your channel is freaking awesome. I went back and I just demonetized all of my old videos where I feel like I crossed the line and I insulted a bunch of people or like I took cheap shots, even if I meant them at the time, which I did. I meant everything I said. I'm not going to lie. But you know, that's not the kind of example I should be setting as a grown ass man who's trying to teach people how to be healthier for longer. So um, I demonetize all that, but I'm leaving them up so I can be accountable and I'm just trying to do a better job than I did before. That's crazy. Cause, uh, now I want to go in and watch these videos. Uh, <laughs> it, it's funny cause I, I tend to keep a small circle with the people I work with. And if, uh, you followed me, you kind of will see that I work with the same people and just kind of repeat working with those people. Um, just for, for reasons we can maybe talk about in this, but, or just sure, whatever you want, man. Um, but uh, I, just a question with the drama content, like sure. when kind of, well, first of all, explain that to me. What, what, it, what do you classify as drama content? Like what kind of videos were you putting out? And after this, I'm definitely going to start binging and watching. Uh, but, <laughs> okay. So some of it's funny, but remember, yeah. I, I built an entire community off of uh, iPad that was made in 2015 and all of my editing is done on that iPad. So like, wow. Manage your expectations, okay? Uh, yeah, so drama content is um, content that is intended to get engagement at the expense of someone else's dignity or reputation uh, and does not provide substantive, actionable information that can help somebody in some way. Okay. Uh, so you can tell that I've thought about this a little. Uh, somebody might define drama content as anything they don't like or don't agree with, but that's, that's not me. I think if we have a strong disagreement on something, we just have a disagreement. Other people think that mean I am like a villain mm. that is a paid shill for the person they don't like or something like that. Um, but, you know, like you ask for that when the energy you put out there is calling somebody. Uh, I, I don't know how comfortable you are with expletives on on your channel. Is it all right if I say you exactly talk about, what I said? Talk about whatever, man. Yeah. Uh, I, called, so I called Thomas DeLauer an unmitigated fuck stick because okay. I didn't think that he had enough intelligence to be speaking on the topics of fat burning and how ketosis works and things like that. I said, Jason Blaha looked like an unshaved scrotum, um, <laughs> which while true is not okay to say, and it's not a constructive thing for me to be like putting out, putting out there. Um, and, and that makes money. Like those videos made like between one and four grand each. 
mm. even with low views, because people just eat them up. And it's very lucrative. Uh, but I, I, my million views video is why they hate Athlean X. And I make fun of Jason Blaha so hard. I like pull every trick out of the book and I like insult him in ways he's probably still trying to figure out how I insulted him. He just knows that he was insulted. Mm. Uh, but, and it was very profitable, but I hate that video. I hate it because of the person that I was in that video. I didn't give anybody one bit of information that helped them live longer. Mm. I just made fun of this dude because I don't like him. And I don't, I don't want to be that guy. Mm -hmm. So I'd rather reach maybe 10,000 people and affect their lives positively than like entertain 100,000 people and make a profit. Uh, that's just where I'm standing now. And I'm way too old. I'm a grown ass man. I'm 40 fucking three years old. I, I should not be picking fights with people half my age. That makes no damn sense. Um, verbal fights because like no matter what anybody says nobody gets in real fights on youtube like That's they'll they'll threaten well they don't threaten you joey you're gigantic uh, oh, and bro, i say I, that i get threatened believe it or not do you really yeah I, i've gotten some threats and i i got trolled pretty hard too like dude I, I sometimes i give them like actual credit and props to like how long it probably took them to write the hate speech that they just wrote me <laughs> so I'm, I'm like i'm like do i take offense or is this a masterpiece you know you know what i mean like it, it's in, it's insane it's almost commendable but at the same almost. time i i guarantee you though if we met in real life like there probably wouldn't yeah. be any beef they probably would be like oh okay like he's a normal dude and this guy's a normal guy and it's like, right we can probably all coexist together never had a bad interaction in person that's that's the difference. I I, uh, I had the audacity to suggest that five repetition sets were not magic, that utilizing a variety of rep ranges, intensities, you know, rest durations and whatnot was optimal to building complete fitness. Mm -hmm. And uh, and I said that some of the hyperbolic statements, some of the inflammatory statements made by um, Mark Repetto were you know irresponsible. And that's my opinion. A guy hit me up and he said, if I ever cross the pond from England, I'm going to spit in your face. And then they threatened actual violence on me. I won't say specifically what it was, but it was a lot of violence. Hmm. Um, and, it, and it involved prolapsing certain parts of my body that should not be prolapsed. Oh. Uh, and I was like, hey, dude, here's my zip code. Let me know when you're in town. Um, if you really mean it, we'll set up uh, We'll set up like a charity. There's an MMA gym three miles from my house. Uh, we'll go check it out. We'll sell tickets. If, uh, if I get embarrassed, your charity. If I embarrass you, my charity. And I never heard from him again. Oh, bummer. It's a shame. You know, we could do some good. I know, right? Yeah. It's like we can beat the crap out of each other. And it's for a good cause. Always for a good cause. Yeah. Never for pride. Have you ever been uh, like confronted or a, like a reply from the people that when you were doing this type of videos, uh, did they ever say anything? Yeah. You know, I've had people make videos about me, but like I'm a public figure that I, that doesn't bother me. I've had people outright lie about me. Mm. so much like saying mm. that i was a paid shill for athlean x uh just like real like attacks on my character saying stuff about my marriage oh, uh, wow. yeah, yeah yeah like they don't pull punches when you when you say something about their favorite person no um but that's that's a lot of the reason why i i never really suffered bad consequences for mm. it if you look at the people who do this for a living and commit to it they get all the hate i had maybe 12 people who don't like me say nasty things like I'm, I'm pretty lucky. I'm not worried about it, but yeah, never only in video. And when I start to interact with those people, two of them specifically come to mind, a guy named Vegan Gaines and a guy named uh, Ryan Ankrum, uh, who said, if they saw me, they'd beat me up or something to that effect. When I reached out and talked to them, the tone was very different, hmm. you know, off camera, the tone was very, well, I just didn't like what you said and I didn't appreciate it. Like, cool, but you're threatening to assault me. And you're saying, I wouldn't say what I said in my video if you were there and I'm telling you, I would say it because I mean it. And if your only reaction is I'm going to beat you up for it, it's short sighted. It's not going to work out how you intended. And I don't think that demonstrates you feel like you have a solid point. Yeah. You, know, you don't win on any level, intellectually or physically. This is not going to be a good experience for you. Uh, and I know that sounds cocky, but like, I mean, I'm a, I'm a former Marine. I don't go into things with the mindset of I'm going to lose. I think about how is this going to be a positive outcome and what is it going to cost me to get that positive outcome? For sure. That's the mentality. Sure. Uh, and, and I do want to talk about that actually, but before we get there, 
Uh, sure, man, whatever. What, like, I just know from being in the space myself, it seems like, and, and I could be wrong, but I do see channels that in the past weren't drama channels and now are getting more into that space where it's like, it, yeah. it, it just seems yeah. like, uh, I don't know if the algorithm is the right word, but where it's just, yeah, money and attention. It's like, I've seen people who've had specific channels on X, whatever strength sport. And then now they're just getting involved with all the, the main topics in the news or trending with other yeah. uh, people in the space. And it's like, and, and to be honest, they're doing pretty well, man. And it's hard uh, from my perspective sometimes to sit there and not want to do that. Right. Because it's mm-hmm. like, okay, you see them growing all these subscribers, yep. you know, that their ad revenue is doing better. Um, but, I, but I specifically remember it was like within the last several months, me having to make that decision of like, morally, that's not me. The content I'm going to put out isn't, isn't going to, it's going to be for them and it won't be yep. for me. Uh, and I do find that there is some bit of a balance there, but I was just like, you know, for what, right? Like, what's the point of me actually putting this out for, if I'm in it for the long haul and I'm trying to actually be proud of what I'm making. So I, so I had this like long discussion, but at the same time, it was an actual discussion that I had to have with myself, you know? Uh, you know? Mm-hmm. So but I think the difference is Joey, I know the difference between my paychecks from, from YouTube ad mm-hmm. revenue from when I was doing it compared to now that I'm not. I have an extremely loyal community that, uh, that is more valuable and can make a bigger impact, both, you know, for sense of self, but also for making sure the bills are paid and things like that. Uh, and you will lose them if you betray your core identity of being a fundamentally good person who wants to get good information out there and wants to connect with people. That evaporates and you become a villain immediately. Even if you have some people that are attracted to what you're saying now, all you have to do is say something they disagree with one time and all of a sudden everything you ever said or did was useless. So yeah, sure. It's uh, alchemist fire. It's super hot, but it's going to kill everything it touches. Mm. And I'm just not interested in that. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, it's, it's cool to hear you talk about it. It's, it's like the flip side too, where now it seems like that's where everybody's gravitating. And for you, mm-hmm. it's kind of the opposite, but I think we're both on the same page of, for me right now, it's instead of casting a wide net, it's just a deep net, you know, like if I have yeah. the hundred thousand subscribers or whatever it is, like I want to develop deep, long lasting relationships with them. And, and kind of what you said earlier, which I really liked was providing them with content uh, that will be valuable to impacting their life uh, yeah. in some, some positive way, yeah. right? Like uh, giving them actual practical uses for, for the information. actionable information. Actually, exactly. something they can do something about. Yep. And I definitely got away from that. I I, I did. And I like, I, I've got uh, 10 siblings, 11 siblings. Oh, I lost wow. two. Well, I lost two to drug abuse. It's really bad up here in, in uh, New England. Uh, but uh, I grew up number two out of 12. So ribbing is is like, and, and sticking a guy in the ribs, you know, that's, mm-hmm. that's a skill you develop in a family that large. Mm-hmm. So like, Insulting people is is second nature, um, and it's profitable, but it's it's ultimately counterintuitive to what I want to accomplish, which is to have a healthier society. I want to positively contribute to that. That's that's man. People think it's a tagline. They think it's like a gimmick. It's not. A third of the people I train in my coaching app. Not only do when I do pricing, are people shocked by how low my like monthly mm-hmm. uh, interactions with are, but a third of them are free. I identify people that can't afford it. And then I, I train them for free. Uh, awesome. One of my, one of my training buddies is the person I, I'm going to have her on my channel more often and things like that. She's going to be helping with demonstrations and connecting to an audience that I can't as a six foot four, 265 pound man. Not everybody identifies with me strangely. Uh, so <laughs> to reach a broader audience, but like, I, I don't charge her a thing because mm-hmm. that's not the position she's currently in. And now she's going to help me out and everything's cool. So sometimes it's like that. Sometimes one of my clients will send me a butcher box instead and pay me like that forever, brother. <laughs> like you want to send a box of meat to my house? Yeah. Okay. Perfectly fine. Yeah. That, that's really cool. I, I do that similar uh, with, yeah, I'll identify either clients or, or even people that I just come across. To, uh, sometimes it, it turns into like just an exchange, you know, like I, mm-hmm. I have, some people that are really good with video editing skills. And it's just like, Hey, you know, I could use some help here in return. Nothing wrong with that. You know, this is what we'll do or programming membership, you know, stuff like that. Um, but I think that's really cool. Cause I think it, the, the cool part about it too, is like when they know they're in a better position, 
and you don't even have to ask for stuff. Like they'll just be like, Hey, you know, you did me a solid, yeah. you know, and, and then it just works out the way that it should. Um, but yeah, man, really, really cool. Cool. And uh, I'm digging, digging where this is going, but I want to get back to sure. the, the military stuff and kind of like the pre uh, pure bull fit, you know, YouTube, anything like that. So just tell me about like you as a person growing up, you know, you're, you're one of, of many. Uh, so kind of like <laughs> what, like, yeah, I just want to know the origin story, man. We all have one and, and each of us has our own. So let's hear it. Uh, well, I'm always a little bit cautious to share because I've had kind of an eventful life and it sounds okay. like it's manufactured, but like it's, it's my life. Mm -hmm. um, so I grew up in a big family and then we had our, I think we're just genetically disposed towards substance abuse issues or addiction. Uh, because my, my folks struggled with that. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was hard. Um, not to get into too many details there, but it was difficult. And uh, I needed some structure when I got out of that. So when I was about 20 years old, I joined the military. Um, I first joined the Air Force because I come from an Air Force town. And my second day on my first duty station was 9-11. Mm -hmm. So like when they're talking about the planes crashing into the towers, I'm like, this is a prank. They're playing on the new guys, uh, which it was not. And then we went to war for several years. Uh, and then I got out of the Air Force in 2005 uh, because I thought it was going to save my marriage at the time. And it, it didn't. Um, there was just too many things going on there that were just deeply not OK. And it ended up being a good thing to get away from that. Uh, so I rejoined the military, except I joined the Marine Corps in 2007 because I was, you know, I, I joined the Air Force. No offense to anybody who's watching who's in the Air Force. I have love for all of our, our people in uniform. But the Air Force is a business with military ethics. It was not the military experience that I was looking for. Hmm. Uh, and I got that in the Marines, but I had to give up my rank. Uh, I went from E5 to E1, which is like a, a, a sergeant in most of the services to a, uh, to a private. I had to go back to boot camp. If I joined any other service, I would have kept my rank and I would not have had to go back to boot camp. So I joined the Marines, of course. Uh, went back, got through training, and then I got assigned to... Um, a intelligence unit that works in anti-narcotics and anti-human trafficking. Uh, they're liaised. It's about 67, 68 Marines. They're liaised to the National Security Agency to conduct um, operations in relation with tracking, monitoring cartels and things like that. So during that time, super hard time in my life because I was constantly exposed to the absolute worst humanity had to offer. Just, man, like all the stuff in the, the cartel movies and, and you guys got no idea how how bad the situation is. Um, and that's not leading in anything political. I, that comment doesn't inform my like where my politics are, mm -hmm. uh, but, but I have seen how bad that trade affects people and affects the communities that it's interwoven in firsthand. Uh, so when I got out due to a neck injury in 2012, um, nothing, it's not a cool story. I wasn't like fighting Pablo Escobar in the jungle or something like that. We have this thing called the Marine Corps Martial Arts Program. And I was helping to demonstrate the neck crank, which is a pain compliance maneuver. You grab the chin, you grab the top of the head and you crank it and you make them comply with whatever you're telling them. Um, as I was helping to demonstrate, I was the uki, meaning the, the one demonstrated on, uh, that cranked my neck so hard it ruptured C6, C7 in my neck. Oh, wow. Yeah, I've got permanent nerve damage in my left arm. And to this day, 10 years later, I still get racking back spasms that go from my butt all the way up to my neck and I can't move. Uh, and that with, in training, getting a damaged kidney, so only one of them is online. I've got a, a major, uh, this is all in the Marine Corps. I got a major high grade tooth hair in my lat on my right side. And I had my left shoulder reconstructed. Uh, I got a, also have a tear, only a low grade due to tear in my pec, all from training accidents in the Marine Corps. So I left like busted, just broken up and uh, emotionally broken up too, because despite the fact that it was hard, it was my purpose. It was my drive. I was doing something that mattered. I was a part of $300 million busts that stopped like so much drugs, so much cocaine, so many people getting uh, brought into the uh, country illegally. Um, that was all gone. And uh, I was in a bad place for years. And I talk about that on my like, I, I think one of your guys shared the, uh, the, the semicolon video with you where I talk about my uh, mm -hmm. struggle with suicide and whatnot. Yeah, yeah. That was a big part of it. So after that, um, 
I ended up working at Blizzard Entertainment, which is a video game company, which is about as far from counter narcotics as you can possibly get, but still dealing with addiction. Let me tell you what. Um, I started working there and by chance, this is how like all the fitness stuff started by chance, Scott Brangle of East Coast, West Coast Strength and Conditioning, the guy that runs California's Strongest Man, happened to be the dude that Blizzard hired to run their wellness program. <laughs> wow. And I just immediately fell in love with, with, with what they were doing. Mm -hmm. And uh, I showed up one day and I was like, hey, my legs don't work. My arm doesn't work. There's not much I can do, but I don't want to be useless anymore. I'm gaining weight. I'm unhappy. I don't like, he's like, fuck you. Come here. Literally grabs me by the ear. Don't tell me what you can and can't do. Let's find out. And he takes me over to the squat rack and he, he assesses my form, my ability, which was terrible. I couldn't even do a, a back squat, an air squat, excuse me. I couldn't do an air squat to depth without falling over. Like I was in a bad way. And over the next three years, he built me up through intelligent programming at times for free. This guy that trained Leifa Engels, world's strongest woman at the inaugural Arnold Classic, who I got to train next to and benefit from her knowledge. Sean Demarius, guys, uh, he, he's held events for Lisi's and Brian Sean. This guy is giving me his time, giving it to me. So I made everything out of that experience. Uh, and, you know, it's nothing compared to my size. It's nothing compared to the weight that you move. But I went from 35 years old, no experience with a barbell, to back squatting 505, to deadlifting 535, with five herniated discs and everything else that I got wrong with me. I hit a bench back in, two years ago of 420. For, for a disabled guy in his mid-40s, I've done pretty good with where I started. And it's all because strongman was something that looked cool to me. Mm. And I lucked, lucked into this relationship with an amazing man and a trade, an amazing group of people to train around and with. And I'll always be fucking grateful. So while still working at Blizzard, not to make this too long, sorry, my whole life story. No, you're good, man. I love it. I'm, I'm intrigued. Keep going. I hated making video games. I was a personnel manager on 14 to 17 titles that they shipped. My, my name is in a bunch of stuff from 2012 to 2017. I hated long hours. I hated the emotional place that I was in. I hated some of the people that I worked with because they were predators. Um, they were leeches. They would stab each other in the back to like get an extra word in at a meeting. They'd throw people under the bus about deadlines and stuff. It was a really toxic work environment. Mm -hmm. But I asked HR, since I was falling in love with this, can I take my personal equipment out onto the basketball courts and work with my teams, the people that answered to me on fitness, since I had two guys that were over 400 pounds. All of them led 15-hour sedentary lives because they were sitting in front of their computers testing games, testing associated programs and whatnot all day long. And they said, you got to get certified. So I got to ask some certification. Mm -hmm. Then I drove in my truck, my power rack, my slam balls, my kettlebells, like 300 pounds of weights to work every day. And anybody who wanted to, which was about 75% of my employees, could come out. We could do a power lunch together. So I started doing that. And then when I finally realized I need to leave Blizzard for my own health, um, I did. And I, I didn't know what the fuck I was going to do. I mean, I got my, my retirement from the Marine Corps, but you know that's enough to take care of the people that are dependent on me. So how are we going to have a nice life? What are we going to do to make up the difference? And I was like, I'll train. So I went to work at a Gold's gym and realized a box gym is not the place for me because I care about people and their actual health, not selling 72 year old, no, 78 year old Mrs. Yong a hundred dollars in supplements because that was like, that was the quota. I was supposed to sell her what pre-workout and creatine. The woman's almost 80 years old. She could do 10 uninterrupted air squats, completely ass to grass. She stayed in great shape. And I think that she just hired me because she wanted to have somebody to talk to while she was on the treadmill. And I accept that. I'm not selling her $100 of supplements a month. I don't care. So like I had to leave that situation. And then uh, I may have fallen in with some bad influences as far as where I got my start on uh, YouTube fitness. Some people who ultimately went in a direction I disagree with, I should say. Uh, they ended up going in a direction that I didn't want to follow, to be fair, um, and have done things I just don't just I just don't agree with. So I'm not a part of those communities. Um, and then I decided to do my own thing, and it's been going okay. Uh, I help as many people as I can. Um, I just try and keep it real, and I have found out no matter how much good you try to do, somebody's going to hate you. 
they're going to hate you for existing. That's all there is to it. Man, but that's man. it in a nutshell. Yeah, dude, there's, there's so much to unpack there. I think it's cool. Uh, and, and you can chime in on any of this, but it's like, you know, I, I talk to a lot of people about getting tied to certain identities and, yeah. and what can happen with that, you know, and here you are, uh, you know, going through in the military, getting injured. And like, that was probably a big identity for you. And when you come out with, with going through a lot of things you went through, you, you're kind of struggling and that, you know, like, I don't want to take words in your mouth, but you're probably depressed because I've been there. Oh, oh, yeah. Yeah. oh yeah. And, uh, it's cool though. Like, so when you started, well, I'll, I'll rephrase the question first. So did you train a lot up until this point when you had met, uh, the guy from California or you just, just never were into it? So in the military, there's this idea that you have all of this great training and you do have access on bases to like some good gyms. Sure. And the people who decide to voluntarily get into that, um, you don't learn how to build your body in the military. The, the military spends your body. Mm. The guys that are in charge of PT are people who have rank, who've been around for a while. They're not, they have no expertise whatsoever, generally speaking, in how to get people in shape. They have minimum standards that you train specifically for. I trained to run three miles, to do 20 pull-ups, 100 sit-ups, lift an ammo can over my head 97 times exactly, run a 800-meter sprint in my boots and my uniform in about, in less than like two minutes and 20 seconds, somewhere around there. I think it might have been 217. I can't remember. It's 10 years ago, man. Uh, and then drag somebody who weighs about 10 pounds within my weight uh, across the ground on my back and carry some ammo cans. Like, if I could pass all of those individual events on the physical fitness test and the combat fitness test, that's all anybody cared about. So that's all I knew about fitness. What, what's funny not to cut you off is, is you said that. And I got a memory when I was in college, uh, the Marines showed up and I actually went and I did that PT test. Uh, and I did it. All those, I remember dragging or holding the ammo can. Yep, There's like yep, pictures yep. on my Facebook from years ago doing it, running dragon. So it's just funny, but anyway, continue. So, so yeah. it really wasn't, like, cause obviously I think, you know, uh, people think, right. Marines are training hard all the time. They have the cream of the crop, but it's, so it's not, it's not like that essentially is what you're saying. At all. Hmm. Uh, so the biggest swollest guys that you see are either directly in special operations and have a lot of free time to work out the way they want, or they're the bullets, beans, and band-aids. They're the guys that file your paperwork, the guys that cook your food, or the guys that take care of your boo-boos, hmm. uh, they're the ones that have the time and the access to consistently work out and get jacked. Most of your legitimate infantry guys are on the small side, but they're made out of absolute iron mm. because every weekend they've got to go ruck 25 kilometers, simulate combat, and then ruck 25 kilometers back. Mm. You don't get big on that. Yeah, You just yeah. don't. Uh, most of the O3s, uh, which is the MOS general career field uh, for our combat arms, are... You know, you wouldn't look at them and go, oh, that's what a Marine's supposed to look like. I was primarily, despite the fact that I got to work with a second Marine Corps Special Operations Battalion, I spent a year and a half with them on Special Operations Task Force 82. I got an award on the wall for it. Despite the fact that I primarily, in my time in the Marines, worked in an intelligence unit processing information, when people saw me, they went, they literally said this all the time, oh, that's what a Marine's supposed to look mm -hmm. like, because I was six foot four and I was 220 pounds. And I had like clean shave and I got a nice jaw and stuff like that. Yeah. So I, I looked the part and that's why people thought I was a real Marine when the five foot two guy who weighs 135 pounds, who's carrying 120 pounds on his back and going down range to kick ass is every bit a Marine. So I was, I was, I find that like John Cena in the Marine, yeah. that movie. Oh my God. That stuff kills me. That's, that's funny. It's yeah, it's definitely against uh I guess what you, what you think about, but it's interesting to hear. Um, so kind of back what I was kind of coming full circle with. So now that you're training, it's giving you almost like this newfound sense of, of like a fire or an identity because, mm -hmm. you, you know, you're, you're, you're kind of building back uh, maybe some confidence in yourself. You're, you're having some goals to set. And I think a Absolutely. lot of people can relate to this, you know, it's like, that's where I find the beauty of just training is the, the benefits you don't actually really even think about that come from it with how it changes you as a person and how it helps with everything else going on in your life. Um, so yeah, so you were feeling probably some, some momentum, you know, kind of coming out of this time period, get involved with strongman. Yep. Uh, and, and what about it strong was like, 
specifically about strongman did you like versus other things that you have done? Like what, what about it? Cause I'm always intrigued. Like I love strongman and I think it's, it's so amazing. So to hear from someone else's perspective of like why they love it, it's cool for, for myself and others to hear. Uh, I think the three primary reasons, um, you know, maybe only one of them is cerebral. Okay. Uh, first expressions of power have always appealed to me and powerlifting is a beautiful thing in and of itself, but it's extremely limited in scope. If you look at the breadth of capabilities that you have to generate as a strong man, mm -hmm. that's impressive. Yeah. Uh, the second thing is, is if you were going to give me a, a, get in a conversation with me and try to argue, um, what is the functionality of different styles or training methodologies or strength sports, mm -hmm. I am fervently going to explain to you in every way I have available to me that strongman is superior for demonstrating functionality. Okay. Applicability to life. You are more likely to um, face a situation where you have to flip a car over and have the raw strength to do that, statistically speaking, than you are to have a real life situation where you have to do uh, 25 kipping pull ups and then burn 10 calories mm -hmm. on a assault bike. Yeah, uh, for sure. I have been in a situation, though, where my ability to press weight against uh, away from myself uh, while my back was pressed against something very solid did come in handy. Unfortunately, an MJ one B, which is a bomb lift in the air force oh, came off the jacks while we were working on it underneath it, fixing the hydraulic lines. And I tried to stop it. I tried to stop this several thousand pound piece of metal, uh, with my hands. And that's ultimately what tore my shoulder out and had to have it uh, surgically repaired. I put my hands up and thank God I had enough strength to shoot my body out from under it. I slid across the floor sideways because my arms were strong enough at that point to not just crumple under the weight and have my face crushed by this oh giant word. lever arm. Worth it. Uh, I started to have an appreciation for fitness then, but I didn't really engage in it as far as strength training until after I got out of the Marine Corps. That, that's, no, that's, that's wild. And it was a really shitty close call. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, I have something similar where I was just helping a buddy load like a 400 pound barrel that he uses for can making candles. Uh, and I was like, if this thing way goes, to go. yeah, I was like, if this thing goes, dude, I'm like, I'm going with it and just tell everybody that I died doing some epic shit, which is just you loading a big vat of candle juice up a flight of stairs. Uh -huh. <laughs> um, but it, so it sounds kind of similar to kind of what you were saying, but different at the same time. And just kind of peek back off what you were saying about like the functionality of strongman. Something that does actually piss me off in the fitness industry is when you have people who like go dive and they're like, well, what is being functional? And, and how do you classify that? Blah, blah. And I'm like, yo, I'm like, I don't care what you say. I'm like, strongman training is functional. And if we're going off functionality as it mimics a lot of the crap that you're going to do in your life mm -hmm. and make you stronger at that, I'm like, then yeah, we're going with it. <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. I'll die on that hill. You can talk about like, um, unhealthy practices to get to the top or to be competitive that uh, permeate, honestly, any strength sport as far as like substance use and stuff like that. You, you can, but we're talking about modality. We are talking about a approach to training. Um, I'm old and busted up and completely natty and I love it. And I get a lot out of it. Lifting a Husafel stone for the first time, not the Husafel stone. We're talking about like a simulation. Mm -hmm. uh, I think it was only like 150 pounds, but it was my first time. It was Im immensely powerful. Uh, empowering atlas stones yoke carry god like you want to feel like a beast you want to feel like you can conquer anything yeah find out how much you can yoke carry that will motivate you hmm. the first time i flipped it's a tire that repeatedly appears at uh, california's strongest man its name is junk and it's a little over 900 pounds somewhere between 950 everybody says it's a thousand pound i don't every every tire is a thousand pounds of competition i don't want to sure uh but it's, it's definitely over 900 pounds. Uh, and flipping that for the first time was like a right of strength. I don't wanna say manhood because Leifa can do it. Leifa can flip that tire for several reps. She's very, very strong. Um, it, it's, these are memories I keep with me that when I'm having a hard time and feel like I can't do something, I go back to that well and I'm like, yes, I can. I looked at that tire for a year and a half and said, I'm gonna flip it and I finally did. And that might sound stupid to somebody, but whatever gets you to put that foot in front of another, whatever gets you to incrementally make progress towards the goals you've set out for yourself and stay motivated, boom, do it.
latch onto it. I don't care if it's looking sexy or naked, or if it's having a lower uh, heart rate so that you can be in a healthy range or getting control of your diabetes. What motivates you to be active and chase a longer, higher quality life is the thing that matters. Yeah. And then two kind of points to piggyback off that being a gym owner, it works for both men and for females. Um, but when, when you get somebody who is trying strongman for the first time and they are picking up uh, a stone or these just odd objects, it's like the coolest thing ever to see their reactions. And yep. you can literally see like their confidence and, and uh, 100%. just like the way that they change. And, and the second part is, uh, with women specifically, like when, when, uh, I have girls come into the gym say, mm -hmm. and I'm telling about strongman right away, like you can kind of tell they're like hesitant. They're like, Oh, strongman. Like they see all these things. And I'm like, I'm going to stop you right there. I'm like, I have more females that end up taking this class than yep. men. Yep. And I'm like, and they absolutely love it. It um, is so freaking empowering. Oh you yeah. Can see it yeah. on their Empower. expression. That's the word I was looking for. Yeah. Just the, yep. the empowerment that people get. Yep out of training uh, for strongman is cool. And, and it's also fun too. like, think about it. You're like, Oh, what did you do over the weekend? You're like, Oh, I, I picked up a stone and, and I moved from point A to point B or, or <laughs> you know, even, even better. Like uh, uh, when we host competitions, like one of the things I haven't done yet for an event, it, but I'm going to do it in the future show is I'm, I'm going to get uh, toilets and I'm going to fill the, the tanks of the toilets with concrete. So they got to do, oh. do toilet carries. Oh, yeah. that's amazing. Yeah. What a great yeah. idea. So I was thinking like, like, it's really for the fact that when someone goes in, they're like, what'd you do this weekend? They're like, yo, like I picked up a <laughs> toilet, like, or like a, like a toilet medley. Concrete. Yeah. Or something um, just to kind of tell a story. So, but it's just cool. And it's also like, you don't, you don't know maybe how specifically heavy it is, but you know, it's heavy. Like you can, you can just tell by whatever they're doing. They're like, yo, that's, that's not easy. And, and sometimes just like, it's fun because it's like, what are we going to do today? Well, we're going to try to move this object from point A to point B mm -hmm. and whoever can do it, can do it. We're going to help each other. We're going to push each other. Uh, so it just makes it fun. And in, in the sense we're talking about functional. Um, so, so I really, that's why like I, I've been so drawn to strongman uh, for so long. It's just th those parts of it. There are a lot of other reasons, but I, I think when it comes to like the community reasons, as well, yeah, the community, uh, just the, the, Great guys. the, the empowerment, mm -hmm. um, and, and, I, I've competed in a, in a lot of strength sports and by far the strongman community has been my favorite and the best from my experience. Uh, and hence why I try to run multiple shows a year and just get people involved with the sport. Cause it's like, you know, at the end of the day, you can't take it too seriously if we're, we're training in a, a back lot parking lot somewhere. Um, but it's one of those That's things. That's the other appeal. Yeah. Yeah. It's just like, you know, it's, it's not like some crazy and, and obviously it's a pro sport, but at the same time, yeah. it's like, you know, we all go back to work on Monday uh -huh. and we have our respective jobs that we do, but you know, over the weekend or whatever, this is like our side dungeon sport that we do. And, and it's dungeons such, a good word. Yeah. It's such a cool community. Cause uh, maybe five people in the world do this as a living like successfully, Yeah, you know, yeah. not, not many people are going to get rich off this. No, um, no, not at all. Uh, but that's really cool that you got into it. And it was like, kind of like the, uh, the first initial, I guess, training type that you had done. Um, so since then, like, have you always kept strongman training involved with your program? And, and I'm, I'm interested to know, like, as you kind of went on with your career, who were those guys uh, that you have taken a lot of things from that you like in, in the space or uh, just in general, like kind of like mentors or, or anybody that is out there that you're like, okay, I like this person, this person, this person, it kind of led me where I'm at today. So like some folks just aren't going to like my answer and that's okay. Just understand that whoever gets their butt chapped over this, we just have a disagreement of opinion. For sure. Um, I learned early in working in intelligence that you can't just seek out information from sources that you uh, initially bias towards, mm -hmm. like that you like. So I try to learn from multi-disciplines, even folks that I don't necessarily have a lot of respect for mm -hmm. as, as people, uh, even if what I learned is a cautionary tale of what not to do. Mm. Um, so because I'm disabled and uh, please, nobody feels sorry for me. I have an amazing support system and I've done an amazing job managing. It's just a reality. I, I have a lot of obstacles physically that I have to work around in order to make any progress. That's it. I don't feel sorry for myself. Nobody should feel sorry for me. 
so an unlikely source that a lot of people disagree with is uh, I've got a lot of value out of Athlete X and his content, uh, particularly the physical therapy stuff. Is there stuff that he says that is absolutely nonsensical to me? Yes. Uh, stuff I disagree with wholeheartedly? Absolutely. Don't put the guy on a pedestal or anything like that, but particularly his pain management and working around like spinal issues and joint issues has helped me move more weight than I ever did when I was healthy and able-bodied. So I get stuff from him. I love Brian from Never Say. Uh, love that guy. I love his presentation, uh, his deadlift cues, his pressing cues, particularly his overhead press cues really helped me sort out myself. I never would have thought that I would get so much performance out of squeezing my ass uh, as I do on the overhead press, but I, I do, you know, that, mm -hmm. that took my, my like overhead press from an ugly, you know, 205 for three to within a couple of weeks, I had 250, mm -hmm. which is the most I've ever strict pressed over my head. Yeah. Uh, and the guy with as many issues as I have, I'm okay with that. I feel pretty good about that mm -hmm. way. I don't even know what I can do push press because it aggravates the three herniated discs in the lumbar spine when I push press and it might go great or I might end up having back spasms the rest of the day. So I don't get to play with that much. Mm -hmm. But the first part of your question, like, uh, oh, it, it, there's a long list of folks. Like I try to learn from everybody. Yeah, for sure. Um, polarizing people like Greg Doucette, I have actually learned things from his content. Not much, but there's a point or two here on how to approach like my goals, like being satisfied with half of whatever my initial goal was. That was really helpful to me. Mm -hmm. uh, there's folks like Scott Bringle who, and, and Leifa and, uh, well, just base. I, I consume so much of the people who compete in the sports. I watch Lisey's channel. I watch Brian Shaw's channel. I even watch Eddie Hall's channel. It was probably my least favorite. I'm just going to say it. Sorry, guys, if that upsets anybody. He talks a lot of smack and then gets smacked like really hard. Like that whole crab thing he was doing in the boxing <laughs> match was just crushingly disappointing Yeah. for as much smack as he was talking that whole time. But he owned up. Anyway, uh, I try to learn stuff from all of these guys and I consume as much of the content uh, as I can and just pick up what I can, where I can. But I'm also on the dorky side. I, if Dr. Brad Schoenfeld puts out something, I read every word of every study that he links because uh, I got a voracious appetite or understanding not just what the body can do, but why. And me being an atypical case with as many physical issues as I have, how close to that mean performance can I get with all of the issues that I've got. Uh, and that remains, you know, a driving motivation. Uh, Socrates, I believe, it's attributed to him, it might not be Socrates, but he said, it's a shame for any man, and I say person, but it's a shame for any man to go throughout life without discovering the beauty and power with which his body is capable. Mm -hmm. And I think that that should be a motivating idea for anybody. Well, what can I do? I started at 35. I'm 43. I've got some physical challenges and stuff like that. What can I do anyway? And I'm still confident that I haven't found out what that peak is. I don't think I've benched as much as I'm going to or pressed as much as I'm going to. This probably November, I'm going to fly across the ocean to go pick up a rock that happens to be on an island with just not very many people. I'm going <laughs> to Iceland to, to lift the manhood stones, man. Does that sound like a, a good expense to most people? I don't. I don't want to see Reykjavik. I don't want to see any of the tourist attractions. I don't even particularly care about the food. I want to go to the lava beaches and I want to lift a damn rock off the ground to say that I did it. And that keeps me moving. So um, I don't like to really do, I don't have heroes though. Mm -hmm. I got my dad and my yeah. dad's a pacifist who's out of shape. So like, I, I don't do the whole hero thing because comparison Comparison is the thief of joy. Mm. If you constantly try to live up to somebody else's expectation instead of focusing on what am I going to be able to accomplish and do I still have more than yester me had in the tank, then you're always going to ultimately be disappointed, especially if that hero that you're following turns out to be a total douche nozzle. I hate that feeling. Yeah, yeah, I've been there a few times. That's why my circle is pretty, pretty small. Small. Yeah, yeah, it's the unfortunate truth, but... <laughs> You know, it's it's going to be that way anywhere. You know, I, I didn't know even kind of you're talking about Blizzard, right? Like that's a very toxic environment. And uh, it's just it was kind of shocking to hear that. Like, but it just goes to show you that there's so many commonalities between different fields. You know, it's never not going to be that way in somewhere versus the other. Um, so but kind of stay on track. So speaking of, of things sure. com coming up for you, uh, 
like, what are your goals right now? Like, besides, obviously you're going to go pick up this rock and that's super badass and I'm pumped for you. Um, what are you focusing on with your training? What's your training plan looking like? Like, I'm always interested to see, especially a guy like you, where you have a lot of these, these issues going on with your body. Mm -hmm. Like, I want to know, like, how do you, how do you break that stuff down? Like, what are your thought processes? Like, cause and at the same time too, a lot of people that I know and as myself as a coach, I deal with this all the time. So if I can learn anything from you, it seems like, you know, like you, like you said, regardless of what people think of athlete next mm -hmm. or not, you've mm -hmm. learned some valuable things mm -hmm. that can help people. So I'm interested to hear, man. So, so kind of indulge me a little bit. So I have two major training goals at the moment that I'm chasing. Uh, I had a very, very bad inguinal hernia from a roofing accident, not even training related. I took a bunch of aluminum uh, roofing right next to my, uh, on my pelvic mount and it split open. And I ended up having a four inch um, issue in guinal hernia. So like my guts were spilling out under my skin. What? Uh, yeah, it was the scariest thing the first time it happened. And I reflexively yeah. just pushed it back in my body. Dude, like, <laughs> oh my God, so bad, <laughs> so scary. It looked like there was a brain right right next to my uh, Johnson. Dude, um, I think you need some bubble wrap, man. I, mean, <laughs> I, I, I listen. This is our my first, wife says that our first actual conversation. And I'm just here to tell you because I'm a I'm a spit straight with you, bro. <laughs> well, <laughs> you may need to protect yourself. <laughs> this is over like you know most of almost all of my injuries occurred in the Marine Corps. And that had a lot to do with irresponsible training paradigms mm. and the idea that you could will yourself past any physical challenge. Mm. Um, and adopting that mentality, you put yourself at increased risk all the time. And that's why so many veterans have so many physical issues. Mm -hmm. They, it spends you, it does not build you physically. Anyway, I, I just, I cannot stress that enough for young people going into the military, thinking they're going to get in the best shape of their life. The, the military has a purpose. You serve that purpose. It is going to come in part at the cost of your body. End of story. End of statement. Um, but yeah, you know, I've I've had accidents, um, and they have set me back. But it has also taught me the mentality that you know, no matter how bad it feels in the moment, and that's the initial message that I sent you talking about your bicep uh, tear, is like it's awesome to see you come back so fast after another setback that would steal the will just right out of most people. Um, and it's really admirable the way that you've just galvanized yourself and, and girded yourself up and you went right back at it. That's, that's what I'm trying to do. So I had this surgery. I'm repaired. I've got a piece of Teflon in me or something. I don't know if that means I'm technically a cyborg, but I'm claiming it. Um, maybe I'll put that on a shirt or something. Worst way to be a cyborg, by the way. Uh, <laughs> but I want to get, I can't wear a weight belt anymore. Mm. When I put it on, I feel the intra-abdominal pressure is just going to blow that patch right out of my body. It, I feel a really sharp sensation down there. And maybe it's not actually a problem. Maybe it's psychosomatic. I don't know. I'm not risking it. Mm -hmm. So I'm building back up without a belt to my performance on the squat and deadlift that I had with a belt. I would like to pull mid 500s again, at least on the deadlift, which I'm, I'm working my way back up to because uh, I just had the surgery the middle of last year, the recovery period, the rebuild period. And I get my squat back over five, back up over five. If I can hit those, uh, I feel really good about that because I could not hit those numbers without a belt before, and I want to now. The other goal, it's nonsensical. It doesn't matter. I just set it for myself. I want to be able to do 20 uninterrupted pull-ups with a total of 300 pounds of weight. And I have been working towards that. I'm currently at 11. So no matter, I'm also on a cut right now, a very modest one, but my weight is dropping. I'm 265 right now. I was... 273 when I started uh, eight weeks ago. So about a pound a week. Mm -hmm. um, so I add plates. I add more plates to the weight. So I stay at 300 total pounds and I want to get to 20 pull-ups. I can currently do, excuse me, I can currently do 11. Is that a metric that matters? Fuck no. Does it motivate me to get in there and train my damn back, get stronger and get wide? Yes, it does. Mm. So that's how I approach training. I find something I want to chase just like my wife. And then I chase the shit out of it until I have it. And then I take it and I make a new goal out of it. Now I'm trying to make her so happy that she never considers any other man a viable option mm. because I treat her so well. Uh, and I'm currently working on that goal. That one's the long game though. That'll probably be about 50 more years. Uh, <laughs> this pull-up thing, I'm probably going to nail in the next couple of months. That's awesome, man. That, that's super cool. Uh, 
I mean, that's super impressive with the pull-up thing. I, I, I feel like down the road, I like to get more involved with pull-ups. They're, they're just, there's something about it that's just intriguing. And when you can comprehend like how much weight that is that you're adding to a pull-up, it just like blows my mind even more. Um, but so for, for even people listening to this, when they do listen to it, yeah. you, you probably deal with gen pop clients. Uh, I know oh, I yeah. do. Oh, yeah. When you're going through maybe talking to them about goal setting or, you know, being compliant with their training, what are some of the tips that you have for them uh, to kind of stay on course? Like you said, like, it doesn't like it is a 300 pound pull up for whatever many reps you want to do. Like, is that like nonsensical? Yeah, but it keeps you training. So it's kind of mm-hmm. like, I like stuff like that where everybody thinks that they need to, you know, uh, I'm trying to, how do I word this? Like, it, maybe it's just okay to have nonsensical goals, you know, mm-hmm. but what matters is the, the overarching concept of the compliance, like, like being able to train. So, so what kind of tips do you have? And just in general, like when you're, as a coach, when you work with people, do you have like a system of things you talk to them about or, or anything like that? I literally have a goal spiel that I give them. Uh, and it all bases around being honest with yourself so that you can be honest with me. Um, the body, since the basic fundamental principle of, adapting to fitness is that the body adapts to the stresses that we put on it. That means that you're going to get better at the goal by doing things related to the goal. If you don't tell me the right goal, I'm going to take you in the wrong direction. Mm. That's like saying you desperately want to go to Las Vegas, but you're embarrassed. So you ask me directions to Toledo Mm. and I faithfully give you directions to Toledo. And then you're pissed up when there's no slot machines. Mm. Like if you're honest with me that you just want to look better naked, if you just want to find out what your abs look like, and you tell me that, we can find the things that lead to the fundamental principle of consistently engaging in the things that will lead towards that goal. Since consistency is the recipe, specificity is the destination or is the the road to the destination, we find what will consistently put you on that road based off of what your goals are. Hmm. And if you can be honest with me about what those are, don't give me shit about like, oh, I just want to, you know, be able to functionally express my strength better, or I just want to feel better in my body. If you didn't mean those things, don't tell me those things. Mm -hmm. And then when they're dropping weight, because what they said is that if they wanted to look more aesthetic, but they're freaking out about their numbers, we have an honest conversation. We manage that. And I said, Hey, you're going to lose five to 10%. We're doing a modest uh, deficit, but your body is not generally going to be as strong when you're underfeeding it as, as when you're overfeeding it. And when you want to be strong again, we can build back towards that level by a very modest surplus and making sure that we train the same stimulus that will get you strong. Mm -hmm. You want to stay as strong as possible, train the same way you got strong while in a deficit. We keep it as simple as possible. You know, keeping it simply strong, like instead of stupid, you know, keeping it simply strong, like whatever way I have to reach you, I will flex to, to reach you because that's my job as the professional. Mm -hmm. My job is not to come up with one way that works and then jam you into that slot, no matter what your life is, because the goal is for you to consistently do the things that are going to make the change. What if my way doesn't work? What if you hate pull-ups? What if, what if you hate running? Then I've got to find other ways to work that low intensity steady state cardio into your life to help you generate lipid mobilization, lipid usage, so that you can drop that weight without negatively impacting your performance to other areas like your work. Uh, your motivation, your intimacy, you know, the the whole nine yards, we got to find the correct dosage and it has to be related with a specific problem. Uh, That was probably pretty long winded. I apologize. No, 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 it was, no, it was perfect. And and I don't know if someone else said this, but I find myself saying a lot, as I always say is compliance is the science, you know, and it's like, to to me, that's, that's my main goal. Yeah. uh, Like, I don't know if I can take credit for it, but I just have said that so many times that it just comes out because what I found anecdotally working with so many people is that's really what it comes down to is, is keeping them compliant. And it's like, if somebody doesn't like something, sometimes they are afraid to say it, but that's where you need to have these conversations of like, you know, okay, well, if you don't like doing squats, we're not going to do squats. I would rather you do leg extensions until your face falls off. If that's, what's going to keep you. Uh, I'll teach the- them. Yeah. Yeah. Right. I'll <laughs> that, teach them. That, that'll, that will teach them. All right. I was going to say something, but uh, I'm not going to, but um, so, you know, that's kind of my methodology. And it's like, my follow-up question to you is going to be, where do you think most coaches go wrong 
uh, when it comes to working with clients. And you kind of already hinted at, at yeah. uh one of the topics by saying trying to fit people into certain boxes that maybe that they don't want to be fit into in terms of their training. Um, but are there other like big principles that you think as a coach uh, we could do better at or anecdotally what you have found works really well for the, the clients that, that you work with and serve? I think that it all fund all the big problems fall under ego. Ego drives us to think that our way is the best way and that they need to conform to us instead of us collaboratively working on ways uh, around their individual problems. Hmm. Ego makes us forget that this is a service industry and they are paying us for a service and we work for them. A lot hmm. of coaches are like, you do what I say. Yeah. Don't like question you're, me. You're my client. You know. Yeah, no. you, yeah. You pay me for this knowledge and you better do it. Yeah. I have a guy right now who worked for a very reputable a person I respect, so I will not name them, uh, actual champion power lifter. And I sent this guy to him because I respect him. And his style, his my way or the highway style did not work for this client. Mm. This client suffered a very minor back tweak. And then there was friction and then they did not work out. And there were some harsh things said between them. This guy comes back to me and says, I know you directed me to him because you think he's a better resource, but I think that you will listen to me better. Mm. I do not have more knowledge than the guy, the professional I'm referring to. I do not have more experience than him. But we have watched this particular client of mine add over three digits to his lifts. He went from low 500s to a 600 pound deadlift in six months. Wow. He went, he's putting in the work because I listened to him and I arranged the training in a way that was going to fit his lifestyle. Wow. I wasn't just giving him arbitrary, like, this is what you do. We, I was willing to him, for him to send me videos and go, okay, well, this is what's going on. It's not technically knee valgus, but you are bleeding a lot of power because you're not stiff mm -hmm. through your legs and your core. And while you're pushing down, watch your body collapse towards the weight instead of applying force to the weight. So we figured out what was going on there so that he could lift more weight. You know, his deadlift went up, his squat went up. Uh, he, he very, very easily squat mid 500s now when Two years ago, like 375 was his PR. This kid is so dedicated. All he needed was somebody to put their ego aside and listen to him because he had some specific problems that affected his frequency and where he could get the work in. I worked with him. We changed out some exercises that were aggravating his low back issues. Boom, the kid's making progress. Mm -hmm. Ego gets in the way. For sure. Um, I think ego is the root of all the problems. We think our time is worth more than it is. I do undercharge, I do, because I don't think that finances should be the obstacle between you and whether or not you can be healthy. Mm. But I benefit from having a, uh, I'm retired. I get money from the government. Mm -hmm. I don't have to make the choice of charging higher. So I, I'm privileged in my, when I say that, so like I, I understand that, not everybody can do that. Um, but just like, I do think that some professionals vastly overestimate how much their time and the knowledge that they're bringing is worth. If you're combining do it my way or the highway with a really high price tag, how are you justifying that value? Because you're telling everybody who has a similar goal to do the same damn thing. Why not put out a pamphlet for $20 and be honest about your impact? That's just my opinion. Yeah, no, no, I, I couldn't agree on that. I think back to I mean, I've been doing this for, I'm coming up on 10 years, but I remember those first couple of years, it was very my way or the highway. And I feel like, uh, and I can say that and look back at myself and just laugh at myself, but I was like that uh, very hardcore mindset of like, if, if you don't come out of the session with like your ass handed to you, <laughs> you know, you didn't work. No. Yeah. And, and I joke around, but it, it was, I'm very serious. We're like, when I first had started the gym it was actually kind of out of my garage for a period of time and i remember like it it was had that like west side barbell feel to it and i remember uh as i you know increased my location size and actually had an established business i was like man if i was coaching people the way that it was in that garage i was like i'd probably have like three clients and i'd be broke as hell <laughs> like you know like it, it was it was a very very bad approach, um, you know, but there yeah, is you, that, that is that portion of the population that views being punished as affirmation. It's a different business technically, but you could make it work. 
Yeah, yeah. Uh, well, I don't know if you've heard of the Lions Den, but it's actually a sex toy shop uh, all across. Ah. So, so I always joke around, and I'm like, yeah, this this gym's just a front for my actual business here. You know, I'm like, I, I'll take pain and pleasure to a whole other level uh, mm-hmm. with my. <laughs> that <laughs> that is a, that is a company slogan right there. Yeah, right there, right there. Yeah. Trademark that. Yep, yep. Um, but no, just yeah, just to your point, man. Like you know, I've been there, and I, I think it's not necessarily like a, a rite of passage, but I just feel like it, it, a lot of people start there and it's mm-hmm. good at least to show growth and progress that you can change and you should, as a coach, be molding, Absolutely. adapting over time uh, and, and transforming. So I think we both have, have, uh, you know, overcome some of that, that ego and, and we're serving the people. And I really like what you said about uh, the money aspect of things and remembering that it is a service, right? Like we are mm-hmm. providing them a service. So a lot of people get lost in, in the sauce there. And they think that, you know, they got to do exactly what I say. I'm going to charge this much money, but it's like, in reality, you're, you're I think you hit the nail on the head. They're saying that uh, their time, they're, they're charging way more than their time is actually worth uh, for, for that service. So, so it's cool that you brought that up. Um, so when, when did you actually start the whole YouTube gig? And the YouTube channel. Uh, 2019. Oh, wow. So it's, it's fairly green. And I took an entire year off between like 2021 and the beginning of this year. Okay. Like until um, about March. I just came back. Nice. And uh, have so you've changed kind of the content you're putting out now versus mm-hmm. what it was in the past. So, so what's the kind of stuff you're putting out now on your channel versus in the past, the drama stuff? So... In the past, I tried, I, I, I would talk about giving actionable information, but it was like surrounded by me making fun of whoever I was talking about, whether it be like John, uh, Jim Stepani or Thomas DeLauer or any of the other people that I feel still today were misrepresenting the efficacy of some bullshit paradigms in order to profit off of people's naivete. And I find that really infuriating. So I use that in this excuse to make what I viewed as entertaining content aimed at embarrassing them, but correcting the information. What end, ended up happening was not enough of the information that people could use was actually presented. It was just kind of alluded to. And I spent more time making fun of people. Okay. Um, I see that. Uh, so what I'm doing now is trying to take a, I'm, I'm talking more openly about mental health. I'm talking about, uh, training mentalities and methodologies that are effective. Like I show a really simple way to approach programming that is not programming on a recent video. I talk about, hey, this is what I do by starting with major compound lifts. And this is how I know stress. Like you don't wanna have to worry about specifically what movement you're doing. Pick the movements that are important to you. Start uh, with the, the, excuse me, higher intensity, lower repetition then work towards moderate intensity, moderate uh, number of reps, and then finish off with isolation exercises to do a higher, that's gonna you know, spread out the amount of strain that you're putting on your joints because you're not going heavy all the damn time. Mm-hmm. And doing nothing but super high volume is extremely difficult because most people don't have the stomach to go deep into that burn to actually get close to failure to get the full, uh, the full benefit out of it. And you, know, you only have to go in, work on your major thing. This is the rep ranges that I use. Then I'll pick three or four exercises or up to five exercises afterwards. And I just kind of like explain it out. So um, that's the kind of stuff that I'm putting out now. The video that I was working on today um, before we decided to talk was about stopping and thinking when engaging with the drama on social media. And I use a situation that's going on now in the supplement industry to say, okay, here's what people are saying. Here's the information that was actually available. Do you really think the folks that are making content on this are faithfully representing the information available when they're ignoring these pieces. Yeah. They, get, they get advantage, they get views, they get engagement by not pointing out that there are flaws in the accusations that are being made. And while they ultimately may end up being true, if you're not considering the factors involved, you're just contributing to a mob mentality that vilifies and attacks people. And unfortunately, so many of you that are involved in it are not going to turn around and apologize when you find out you were wrong. You're just going to think it's okay because they're a public figure and they deserve whatever is aimed at them. And I think that that's wrong. So that's the kind of stuff that I talk about. I talk about mental health. Uh, I do product reviews. Um, I did 60 days on terkesterone and fuck me. I saw results and I, I did a very like 
controlled kind of thing. And I pointed out, like the whole thing was to say, <clears throat> my anecdotal experience is not science. This is not science. This is what happened to me. This is not science. <laughs> And it was like, this seems to have worked for me. Here are the things that I couldn't account for, but it seems to have done something. This is not science and yeah, this is yeah. not a recommendation, <laughs> yeah. right? So I was trying to point out how testimonials can be bullshit. And then what ended up happening was I lost an inch off my waist and my hack squat went up a hundred fucking pounds in 60 days. <laughs> and like, I had to eat, I had to eat crow because I did not expect it to go that way. Um, but yeah, the, I do prop reviews and stuff like that. So uh, I just... Anything I can find that I think is going to help people approach this better, smarter, live longer, that's what I want. That's what I want to do, man. That's, that's cool. And uh, I really like your critical thinking aspect on things. And and kind of what I'm hoping to do even with myself is I'm investing a lot more time into just, I keep repeating the word, but depth, right? Yeah, like, like, like I feel like the next evolution of coaches uh, is going to be ones that are not only able to go deep, but deep in multiple topics too, you mm -hmm. know? So it's, it's a, a huge investment for, for upcoming coaches who really want to stand out. Um, and I'll be the first to say, like, I always tell people, like, I'm not an expert. Like I know yeah. some stuff, but at the same time, I'm like, guys, like you gotta be in like, I don't know. I swear, like you gotta be like 50 or something like that before you can claim you're an expert. <laughs> Like I, I, I won't be able to, cause I started late, but I feel you, but you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah. like when you hang out with people who've been around for such a long time, like there's just their, their knowledge bank is so extensive. So I always tell people, I'm like, I'm still learning. I'm never going to stop learning. Uh, yeah. I'm just here trying to absorb as much knowledge and get better at the critical thinking aspect Absolutely. of things. Um, question. Which, yeah. Question. Right. Like, like, uh, I liked what you said earlier too, about kind of taking information from, uh, you know, coaches you maybe don't agree with just to find out that what you learn is that I don't agree mm -hmm. with this coach. And yep. here's why, you know, that's like, it's like reading a book, right? Like I joke around people and I'm like, yeah, I read that book. What'd you think? Well, I learned that I didn't like that book, you know, and here's why, <laughs> here's why I didn't like that book. Um, you know, but at the same time, it's like, I still learned something, even if it was mm -hmm. that, that was the, the premise of what I learned. So uh, I'm really digging it, man. I, I think it will be really cool to kind of watch your, your channel grow, um, you know, and, and evolve, uh, and, and you better bet once I'm headed in a better direction. Yeah. I'm, I'm feeling good about the direction that it's yeah. headed in. I feel like I'm being fair and faithful to my community yeah. in, in, in what we're built on. And I'm just trying to, you know, when I, when I hit you up, it wasn't to get like a conversation with you. And I was very clear about that when we were talking. Oh yeah. yeah, yeah. Um, no, no, for sure. Um, I saw somebody who I see the kinds of things that I want to do. And you're already a little farther down the path doing it right. And I just wanted to give you some encouragement because I know how hard it can be to come back from a damn injury. Uh, and I do that all the time. People are like, oh, you, you're just supporting so-and-so because you want X, Y, or Z. No, I uh, support yeah. people. I, I try to put positivity out there. I, I know that you've been fed a steady diet of negativity and drama, but please believe there are other nutrients out there that serve you better. Like That's where I'm coming from. If I see somebody who's doing a good thing, I just want to, I, I want to support it even if it does not benefit, especially when it does not benefit me in any way. No, for sure. And uh, we, we have four more minutes on this. I see, that. I see that. But um, I figure we can probably just end this within this four minutes. And then you and I mm -hmm. can just talk a little bit after um, sure, man. separate one. But no, man, I, I, I totally agree. And, and to be honest with you, I wouldn't be on a phone call with you if you were somebody who I felt like was... Douche any, nozzle. Yeah, it's douche fair. nozzle. Yeah, any, any of whatever acronym or adjective you want to throw in there. Oh, there have been um, lots. <laughs> yeah. So, and it was kind of funny too. Yeah. How, how uh, I heard about you was through one of the members at the gym. And I'll be honest, like when it comes to actually content, like I'll check in on some people that I know, mm -hmm. but for the mm -hmm. most part, like, you know, I'm just in my own little bubble, you know, yep. I, I, and, and for me, it's like, I don't really learn about many people unless it's through something like that. And that's how, how uh, my man, Charles, had brought you up. Cause he was, I think, was it he dropped it in my stream. Was it a stream? Or like my first stream on Twitch. I just started streaming on Twitch for fun. Yeah. And dude, man, dropped in. That yeah. Cool. He, he, uh, he's actually the one I probably learned most about what's going on in the space. And, and I think sometimes it catches him off guard because he'll be like, what'd you think about it? And I'm like, Charles, I have well, no idea. I, I have no idea. <laughs> you know, or, or like when people ask me, even it's interesting, even with uh, like Strongman, like I only follow the people that I've met personally. Other than yeah. that, like, the number one question I get is who do you think is going to win world's strongest man? Or how do you think so-and-so is going to do Arnold? And I'm like, unless it's Martins Lisi's, I don't know anybody else because that's yeah. the only guy that I actually really know. And I've been that way my whole life with sports, 
whatever. Um, but yeah, man, I, I mean, I'm, I'm definitely going to uh, go through your channel after this conversation and I'm going to watch some of the old stuff and then some of the new stuff. Uh, it, it's going to be, it's going to be an experience. Some of it's pretty cringy, man. Some it's going to be an experience. Uh, yeah, I'm, I'm pumped, dude. Um, but yeah, real quick, I'll just close this out, man. I'm super pumped to have you on this conversation. Hey, and man, thanks uh, for talking to me. Uh, um, I'm excited to, to continue to get to know you. You said you were in New, New England. Is that where you're at? Yep. Yep. So anytime, man, I feel like we could do a possible uh, collaboration or something, or you come to the den or I'll come up your way. Oh, I'd be happy to see the den. Yeah. You, there's nothing where I live. There's, there's nothing. Don't nothing. <laughs> I was in uh where I was in Salem last year. I did a, a little, I spent my honeymoon there. Yeah. Yeah. I did uh, a, yeah. for about four days in Salem right in yeah. uh, uh, end of October. So I got, yep. I got all the Halloween vibes um but that's as, as far as i've really have been there um, yeah it's about five hours of south of me so okay right on it gets more remote and more boring okay. every minute all right so so maybe you got to come to the den then and uh, i'll have to come to the den. <laughs> we'll, we'll get some training in and uh we'll eat lots of, lots good. of food um but yeah man Even so better. so i appreciate it and then anybody who enjoyed this conversation obviously uh i i like this guy so go check out his content watch I appreciate uh, that, man. watch all the videos and and uh, give them some feedback or, or subscribe. Please whenever. do. Yeah. Uh, I'm not scared of words. I put them to good use. I'm not scared of words. 